In this lesson, we are going to be looking at stretching and shrinking graphs. Our objectives, understand how to vertically stretch or shrink a figure, understand the stretch-shrink factor of equations, this is always going to be dealing with vertical stretch and shrink, and understand how to determine the stretch or shrink, again vertical, factor of a graph. Vocabulary. Vertical stretch makes the height bigger. This is a multiplication that will cause everything to grow taller. Vertical shrink makes the height smaller. This would be multiplication that makes our graph smaller. Vertical stretch would be multiplying by a number larger than 1. Vertical shrink would be multiplying by a number smaller than 1. Negatives um, don't really matter, so a negative 2 would still be a stretch because the negative um, actually causes reflection. So we're just looking at the number negatives and positives don't mean much in the stretch and shrink. So we're first just going to look at a basic graph. Here I have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. So we're going to be multiplying the y value by 2, and this should raise the height, or make it taller. So we get negative 2, 2, 0, 8, and 2, 2. So now I just graph those. There's 0, 8. Uh, we've got negative 2. Oh, this is my fault. These are both negative 1s. So these would both be negative 2s. So notice the width stays the same, but the height has been um, made bigger, so it's a much taller triangle now. Okay, we're going to look at this for a vertical shrink next. So again, I made a mistake. These should be, this should be negative 2, and this should be negative 2 struggling with my negatives today. Um, so what we have is we want to shrink this vertical shrink by a factor of one half. So we're going to multiply by one half. One half is smaller than one. So I'm going to do a little math here. We're going to get negative three, negative one, zero, two, and three, negative one. So we just graph these, negative 3, 1, 3, negative 1, so negative 1 for each of those, and 0, 2, so if you notice again, the width has stayed the same, we have just shrunk the height of the object. Now we want to look at how this works within graphs, so we're first going to look at uh, the basic graph. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to graph the parent function of absolute value, y equals absolute value of x. I'm going to graph a vertically shrunk version so you can see the comparison of these. And this one we're multiplying by 0.5, so this should vertically shrink by a factor of 0.5. So this is going to be 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. Absolute value of all those. There's our absolute value. Now let's look at um, the vertically shrunk one. Uh, so we've got negative 2. It's going to be 2, 
Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 2 times 0.5 is 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1 times 0.5 is 0.5. Absolute value of 0 is 0 times 0.5 is still 0. Absolute value of 1 is 1 times 0.5 is 0.5. Looks like a pattern here. I'm going to guess that that's 1 also. You can go through the math if you want. So now I've got to graph these. So I've got negative 2, 1. I've got negative 1, 0.5, 0, 0, 1, 0.5, and 2, 1. Notice how we have shrunk the height. It's still the same width as it's going to keep going with the other, but it's not going to be as high ever because of that. So the height has been brought down. So graphing it is one thing. That's the easy one. If you have a graph, how do you know what the stretch or shrink factor is? That's a little tougher. That's what I'm going to do now. So I basically have a three-step process for doing this. And that three-step process uh, starts pretty simple. Identify the parent. So for this one, it's a quadratic. Meaning, I have a parent of y equals x squared. And it's important that you know the equation. Because we're not going to graph the parent. We're just going to go with the equation to help us. So what we need to know is we need to go to our graph. And we always start at the vertex. And uh, we need to figure out how far right do I have to go to get to the next point. So here's my first point. I need to go right 1 to get to it. So my x move is going to be 1. So I had to go right 1. Our parent is always going to have to have the same x move. So that one's going to be 1. These two have to be the same. Then we need to know the y move, which is how far up or down do I have to go. Now I don't care negatives or positives, I just care the distance. So here we're going up and we have to go 1, 2, 3. We have to go up 3. So this is going to be a 3 here. All right? So that's going to be a 3. It doesn't matter if it's up or down. It's just how far. So if I go down 3, that's still 3. OK, then we need the y move of the parent. And this is why we need the equation. To find out the y move of the parent, you take your x move and you put it in for x. So 1 put in for x would be 1 squared. So here we need to get 1. All right, so now what we can do is we can take these two, and the reason I have the table set up like this is it makes a division problem. 3 divided by 1. This is new y divided by parent y. So 3 divided by 1 is 3. So we have a stretch, because that's bigger than 1, so it's a stretch by a factor of 3, meaning they had to multiply by 3 to make these, to make this graph. All right, now this is kind of tricky. We're going to be working on it for a little while, uh, but make sure you pause, rewind, and rewatch um, this video a little bit to make sure you catch everything and bring any questions to class. Thank you.